you think that I'd be pretty good at this by now by checking the default tab on the audio after a big Windows update, but you live and learn. And now you're looking for answers with AMD. My name is Mac. This update ain't quackers, and we're going to be getting into some nice FPS reports. To sum it up, basic Windows has always been a step behind, but as I'll showcase throughout some benchmarks and some patch notes along the way that we're going to offer what has been changing because there's a new horizon and it is dawn. You can now pick up another PlayStation Classic on PC. The full complete edition is now entering that little landscape on top of grounded and some of its stuff for the 5700 XT getting 9% more extra. But let's go ahead and dive into a little bit more of the pure overlay and we can go over some of the highlights. Some of the situations you'll be seeing is the fixed issues of the FreeSync, it being able to kind of intermediately handle two screens at once, the streaming and the recording functions that weren't working on the 5000 series for Windows 7, which is a kind of getting a legacy mode almost in it. Now you're looking at the software where it used to experience some of the hangups with the experience programming and when it went from sleep those have been fixed. Doom has also been added to the list for a nice HDR on top of the hot plugins for the HDMI that went directly for the display and the intermittent crashes or hangups would happen. Basically stutters. Now looking at the power rating for the TDR kind of just to strain itself on the 5000 series no longer. We've been seeing some nicer hopeful improvements and I have been seeing some comments of people pushing down that it has been sort of an issue. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive into what was a little bit past what the known issues are. I feel like we can just take a little bit of a moment to digest those but at the same time i don't want to make it the whole point because we have some very fun benchmarks that i want to get into and elaborate on what these actually mean and why for once windows actually has a button that works but which one you'll have to stay tuned to find out but as you can see it's not an actual physical game overlay you can see me going between digital realms and we kind of go into the known issues now one of the things that the 5000 series makes the list a lot of with was the configuration what they have with the flickering screen it's redundant as we kind of go down the list on top of the performance metric overlays that experience the 700 series of that so the 5700x not but pretty much that whole series i wouldn't even doubt if it had the xt2 as well inside of there uh, but looking at the past for hdr and the development flicker screens and the list continues on with the normal issues that we normally have now they go on to elaborate what they utilize in their labs to go inside of there but let's go ahead and pull out some benchmarks now, before I explain the whole trail of benchmarks we're about to run into, the reason why we're going to take a little bit more of an in-depth look at this is so you can kind of see what the mess of what Windows had to rearrange. When looking at the circumvent, I did recommend that the advanced scheduling was a good choice at that moment. But if you installed the security update like I did, it completely trashed it. But looking at some basic scores, what well, we can actually dig our teeth into, now, when you look at these two scores, this seems like Saturday morning cartoons, like some wacky races, some classic relic of yesterday. But looking at the situation, what basically it says is either the accelerator on, which happens to be the one that's on the right, and the accelerator off, but variable fresh rate on. And it literally almost tied. I, I didn't really see the whole benefit of that. I was like, wow, this you can just pick either one. And, but somehow when you turn them on both, they didn't even work in tandem. It completely collapsed. As you can see on the left, which the score is the collapse of that update. And the one on the right is just the standard nothing on. So it's actually worse to have both of them on with the old update. When you look at the newer update, there's some promising factors. So this is where it gets fun. This is basically what we're going to go over is the linear pattern of what the new update. So we're looking at 20.8.2, which we're covering today on top of some benchmarks. You can see that this should be everything off, right? Well, for once in its Windows a lifetime, they actually sync something right with AMD with their update. So now you can see a 2100, pretty cool base, right? Then you have like a situation where you give it a nice little boost and you see an instant transmission when it comes down to 100 points up for as far as just having one off or the other. And this is just the advanced scheduling. You already get like 100 boost. But when you have them in tandem with the variable refresh rate and the advanced scheduling, you get some solid scores. With just the variable refresh rate on, you even get 
pretty good score so they're actually something that is mathematically sound for the first time ever like looking at a lot of the numbers and seeing it like always jump around i always wondered like who is like i guess the benefactor of bad coding and it was kind of windows and I can see where Windows did do some stuff and they got ready with a security update and this actually worked. Now, is this going to stay? I don't know what happens after the next Windows update, but I can here say that 20.8.1 is a phenomenal update for AMD, especially if you're rocking the 2004 software for Windows 10 and you have advanced scheduling on, or if you have the option for the variable refresh rate, you're literally sitting in like a flavor of like, refresh rate that's finally now good for gaming like i would like to hear the comment of the community down below of what you guys and gals think but let's go ahead and take a look at more of the extreme and the ultra tests of directx 11 but everything pretty much trends going towards that even with looking at the directx 12 which ends up being a well-rounded update so i definitely say if at this point in time in the video you haven't already started downloading it i would fun factoid though do a clean install they kind of like mentioned that a few times that that was where some of the issues were lying and like a certain series of cards but i feel like that that's just like a broad band thing because it's just fighting with windows to install so if you don't see it in your recycling bin at the end of the install just go back and just do a factory reset and make sure you know you can keep your settings it's fine it'll just ditch all the old settings and just re-factory it's really nice and really sweet but let's go ahead and look at the extreme test with the illustration of the graphic driver that's not approved because apparently I'm testing out some newer stuff that it really hasn't hit the 3D Mark benchmark update, but it still runs flawless, which I think is pretty cool. And you can see that the scores are already much beating it. And this is bare bones. These are standard to standard. So you can definitely see now that I've illustrated the, the advanced scheduling and the variable fresh rates work that you can get some nice boosts on top of that, which is gonna be pretty nice on top of some extreme portions of 1080p. Now looking at 4K with the Ultra, it's pretty much trending towards the exact same as Ultra is Jack Me Nimble and <laughs> literally clearing it by three points, which is pretty good. 4K, I mean, you're gonna see a little minute m movement when it comes down to numerals in those situations, but nothing crazy. <laughs> Looking at DirectX 12, you can see that it excels quite well, actually. A nice 40 points with even just the basic portions of DirectX 12. It's getting real, which makes me more excited to see what ends up happening with NVIDIA and their update that's probably to fall tomorrow, if not the day after, since there's some Horizon Zero Dawn in the dawn of uh, having to add those to the driver list. Now, this is one of the ones that is a little bit more funny where you can see that it, it does take a nice little punch when it comes down to the top tier portions of what they're seeing inside of the 4K department. But I mean, honestly, this is bare bones, standard to standard. You pop on the advanced scheduling and some refresh rate, who knows? That could clear 800, no problem. I would almost want to say probably 830, if not going towards the 40 range, which would be a nice little increasement, probably about like a one or 2% decently, so. If you are new to the network, cheers. Appreciate you sticking along this nice digital trail as we were kicking it and figuring out, hey, Windows and AMD finally hit a harmony. So I'm definitely recommending this optional. I'm definitely recommending to update your Windows and stay safe, stay classy. Thank you so much for all the returning members that have been using those affiliate links down below. Even if you portal in and buy stuff through Amazon, that somehow gives me a kickback and you can buy what you love. So, and if you do subscribe today, who knows? Maybe I'll buy another one of those like rubber ducky like things and we'll unbox it towards another little digital thing. If you didn't already catch that one, there's another video that I'll link um, down below, I suppose. And you can check it out. It's just a nice little Borderlands thing. You can get some digital keys and watch the ducky come to life. But I'll see you guys and gals in the near future. And I'm gonna get some sleep. You know, Yonzi, I had to re record this. I really hope there's audio. I'm gonna be like, well, I guess silently aggro if uh, it doesn't occur because it's like a silent film. But later, everyone. <laughs>